How you doing? I'm Mike Gaddy and welcome to the 743 Patterson Park Podcast. This week I got to sit down with Baltimore photographer Molly Miller. Molly starts each and every photography shoot asking one simple basic question. What if we could really see each other? She asked that question this past June when she went to downtown Baltimore to photograph the Black Lives Matter protest rallies. And then when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, she launched her own front porch project where she asked that question again, photographing people on their stoops and in their front yards, all to raise money for the St. Francis Neighborhood Center. And then just a few days ago, she asked that question again when she went to downtown Washington, this time to photograph Trump protesters in a protest that turned into a riot right around her. Molly creates photographs painting with emotion where other photographers use landscape and light and trees to create beautiful images, sunsets. She is more concerned with the emotions between people and the stories that, the, that they tell. We talk everything in this interview, everything from running a business during COVID-19 to being isolated as a creative person with no one to interact with, to what Baltimore's like as an incubator for small business. So please join me. It's a heartfelt talk. It's one I enjoyed and I hope you do too. Take a listen. So what I mean is that I go into a session without any kind of preconceived notions and I don't tell people what to do. Basically, it's all about me, like you just said, sort of observing people and their natural habitats. Um, <laughs> so we're out at a park and I, or wherever, sometimes it's a backyard, sometimes it's a front porch or a stoop. Um, and what I'm kind of looking for are emotions. So I'm trying to figure out the connections between people. Is there a kid who doesn't want to be in that photo shoot at all <laughs> because he just feels like he's been forced to do something. Um, is the dad kind of like, oh no, or is the, do I see some sort of something between the parents, they're worried about their child. I really wanna get all of that stuff. I'm gonna get the fun times and all of that as well, but I'm really interested in catching these little, um, something like micro emotions like that I can catch. Um, and but that's what you of see what most photographers that I know describe their photography as telling a story with light. What you're saying is, yeah, yeah, of course, but you're telling a story with emotion. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Um, and so, yeah, and then when I go back, I mean, it's kind of the, the end of the session, obviously, but when I go back and I'm looking at those, all the pictures that I got, my process is like, I go through every single picture. I might take, you know, 800 pictures or more. Um, and I just go through until I feel something. Boop, boop, just click through. Oh, there's something interesting there. It might not be like a great photo that particularly, but oh, I see something there. Oh, I see something there. But see, I'm with you on this. Um, I described, and, and it hasn't dropped yet, so you haven't seen this yet, but I just interviewed a gentleman who I described as my brother from another mother. Okay. And uh, I would describe you as my sister from another mother because oh. we approach photography very similar, similarly, similar. Because uh -huh. <laughs> you know, my mom, when I was growing up, would, would stop the car in the middle of the road, people would be honking, you know, and she'd go, oh, that's a great photo. Okay, mom, keep driving. <laughs> <laughs> My interest is definitely people, um, people and their and their pets. Sometimes it's people and their animals. I find that really, really interesting, that dynamic. But yeah, it's definitely about relationships, people, emotions. Yeah. Sure. So anyway, um, so you launch Molly Millie Photography in 2019. A year goes by, and then slammed in in March with COVID. How did that affect your business and, and what did you do? I mean, you just started a business and then it'd be slammed with COVID is, you know, kind of depressing. Yeah, I mean, it is. And it, I mean, definitely this was like, just unbelievable that this happened at all in the world. And then like, just bringing it closer and closer and closer to home. What am I gonna do with my business? How am I gonna make money? Um, but also just, okay, how can I make this 
an opportunity to build my, my brand? How can I um, improve my website? Like really figure out what I want to do. What do I not want to do? Like just figuring out all these kinds of things that I might have just pushed to the side and just kept busy, busy, busy doing the photo shoots. Um, so I put a lot of devotion into that, um, a lot of work into my website and just like, what is the kind of the question that I want to answer with my photography or what's the problem that I want to solve? What, what, is it? what if we could really see each other, which is what I have on my uh, main page of my website. Because I realized that that's sort of, that's my ultimate question is if we could really see each other, um, how would the world be different? How would our lives be different? I think that we would love each other. I think we would care more deeply about each other. Um, so that's what I want to do in my photography. Like I sort of realized, like, let me just keep asking this question over and over again. Like, what if I could really see you? What if I can really see this family, this child, this couple, um, and then showing them to themselves, which is really, really satisfying. So do you think that that is one reason why the Black Lives Matter movement has been more successful this time around than it was the when it first started? And by that, I mean, I was talking to a gentleman on a podcast episode that's about to air who said, it's like an aha moment. The, this time it was like, wow, I see you, I really see you, I understand you. And that's why people have begun to, people of all colors have begun to identify with the Black Lives Movement. The reason why I ask you is because I saw in some of your street photography where you had gone out and, sh and photographed some of the protests, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I guess my question is, do you think that, that part of the, um, part of the Black Lives Matter movement coupled with the pandemic has created this opportunity for us to actually see and understand each other. So I felt like, okay, if I'm gonna go out and be part of this, I'm gonna do it with my camera and I want to take this opportunity to photograph these people in this extraordinary time that we're in um, everyone was wearing masks. We were all very, um, you know, following protocol. It was really cool. Actually people, you know, just interesting how everyone kind of has their role. So I was there with my, uh, my camera. There's people there who are just shouting so loudly that I can hear their, their throats going raw just from screaming so loudly. And then there are people who, um, were leading where they just, they're, they're leaders, they're up there and they're, they're taking people through the streets. And then you have someone who's out handing out a uh, hand sanitizer and sandwiches. I mean, just how this, like everyone coming together and sort of having their role. And so that was my role. My role was, I'm going to be here. I'm going to shout too, but I'm going to be documenting. And um, so COVID-19 hits you, um, you grab your camera and decide to go out and launch your own front porch project, kind of piggybacking on the national front porch project <laughs> movement. Yes. That's, I have to watch my diction. because I just right, right. Anyway, um, so what, what inspired you, though, to go out and start your own front porch project here in Baltimore? Well, in the beginning, I just thought, well, this is a great idea. Kind of, you know, these families are in their homes, they're quarantined, they're bored. Um, it's April. It's, it's nice outside. Why not just people just come outside and I'll take some photos. And then I just realized how emotionally fraught this whole time is just within those households, all, you know, the kids, the parents, um, maybe there's a grandmother or grandfather living in the house with them. All these different feelings. You have the joy of just having your family together. Everyone's together. Stress. Everyone's together. <laughs> joy of having your family together <laughs> and the stress. Of having your family exactly. And just like, <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then like boredom, just like, oh my God, boredom. These kids, the parents, um, they're working from home. They're trying, I mean, just all of this stuff and it's all in each of these houses that are just 
right here, right, right for the picking, you know? <laughs> so I decided, all right, I'm going to go out and see if I can capture some of those or really just kind of like grab at those emotions. Cause it's like this kind of low hanging fruit right now. But what I, what I found was it was a lot of complicated emotions and um, I did see a lot of joy. I saw a lot of sadness. I saw a lot of poverty. Um, and I really tried to get a good range of people from all over Baltimore, Baltimore County, Baltimore city, um, and just kind of getting like a sampling, um, and feeling really engaged, like as a human being, just sort of being out there. Um, do you think that that's part of being a creative person needing and seeking that engagement? I think it was Allison when I interviewed her, she said that the, um, the jewelry creator, she said uh -huh. that one of the things she missed most about being able just to go down to her shop and talk to people and engage with people and to have these conversations. Do you think that's part of being a creative person is just having that as much of a need as breathing? <laughs> I mean, for, for me, yes. I know uh, there are other creative types that don't need that. For me, yes. The answer is absolutely yes. And I learned that during this time. You're right. um, I'm an introvert. I'm an introvert and an extrovert. Um, Are you an introvert though when you're behind the camera? No. Uh huh. And Wait, I don't know. Wait, am I an introvert when I'm behind the camera? Well, when you're photographing. Um. Yeah, I think. Well, yes and no because, in a way, yes. I because I'm observing and I'm just I'm soaking things in and I I want people to forget that I'm there. Right. Like I just, I want to blend in. Um, but then there's kind of a performative part of it too, where it's like, Hey, like I need to kind of let you know that I'm, I'm here for you. I'm taking care of you. Here's what we're going to do next. Um, so that part has to be really extroverted. It really does use a lot of like different parts of my mind when I'm in a, a shoot where, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's a, it's a great blend of both of those worlds. Yeah, I mean, you're, like, you're like a conductor for an orchestra. You know, you have to have your ear on all the sections of the orchestra to make sure they're all singing. And, you know, meanwhile, the kids are playing. It's got to be hard. It's a different kind of photography that, than I do. So I, I'm really interested in that because, you know, getting all those pieces together to tell the stories that you want to tell through the emotion has to be tough. Molly, you can't get, you gotta be the, the conductor. So I can't get so wrapped up that I'm just having this great experience with them. I mean, I do have a great experience, don't get me wrong, but I have to be like, okay, is this working? Is this, are my settings correct? Do I have the ISO, all that stuff. Um, and okay. then once I know things are in place, it just, beautiful. Right, then the music comes. So you mentioned St. Francis. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about that. Is it yeah, um, I learned about them a few years ago back when I was at the Bloomberg School of Public Health. Um, I had a friend who volunteered there a lot and she lived in the Reservoir Hill neighborhood. That's where it's based. Um, and essentially they do a lot of great work for the families that live in Reservoir Hill, Baltimore, West Baltimore. Um, so this is a low income area and the kids go to different schools, but then they come to the St. Francis neighborhood center after school. And it's really a place where they can uh, join clubs. They can do their homework in a safe space where they're being, you know, monitored, but it's also just this really loving community that they get to come to, um, and, and then there's all sorts of like programs that they have and volunteer opportunities for people to come in and teach and all sorts of things for the kids. So, so you've used your front porch project to raise money for the St. Francis neighborhood group? Yes, I did. So all the donations that I got from the porch project, I gave a large percentage of that to the, um, to St. Francis Center. And um, how many porch project photos, not just ones that uh, achieve donation, but how many porch project photos do you think 
you how many families do you think you've done off the top of your head? Oh yeah. Okay. So well now I'm in phase two of my project where I'm going back and photographing families who I photographed before in April, and now showing them in like Christmas week, which is just insane that we're in this situation. Um, but uh, I have photographed to date um, around 60 families in wow. Baltimore city and county. Yeah. So it's, it got a really big reaction out of people. People still want to be part of the project. And I have to say like, okay, hold, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had to be part of part one to be part of part two. Um, Do you have part- any idea of um, uh, uh, how much, uh, how much money you, you've raised through the project for St. Francis or, or do you not keep those figures? It's okay if you don't. Um, yeah, no, no, I do. Uh, so for the first round um, of donations that I got, I gave uh, a little over $300 for the St. Francis Center for their, um, this particular need that they had in, I guess, early summer for uh, basically food programs for, for families in the, in the Reservoir Hill um, area. Maryland. My question now, is, how do you think Maryland is when it comes to supporting the independent photographer and the creative person, as in particular Baltimore and the Baltimore community? Um, well, I can speak to just the small business community in general here. I mean, it's known for its um, innovation. The city is like just incredibly creative. People um, start businesses and they do, they do really well here. And everyone has um, just a lot of passion for their, for their craft. Um, And so I can say that just being in a city where that is so, it's just the lifeblood of the city. (laughs) I feel like it's just, it's something that, um, there's high energy for small businesses. There's just a lot of creativity and there are resources for artists as well. But I think- What are some of the resources that you've tapped into to help you as a starting out as a professional photographer? Well, I I really was just gonna say that the the resource for me is just that there are other small businesses. (laughs) So a lot of the time, what that is, is that I might say to a someone who um, has a small business, and I'll give you a link to this person's um, business. Um, it's called Eliudes. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but she does Belizean style um, hot sauces and like uh, little cakes and desserts and cool things. And she, I think had posted something. I'm not, I'm not sure how I learned about her, but I was like, Hey, I would love to do some, some shots for you, for your business. And it's just kind of that, that generosity and like how we've kind of given and taken from from each other since that time that I did those portraits um and just the mentorships like I mean I have a photographer friend who I don't think she knows she's my mentor but she is (laughs) um because I just ask her all sorts of questions and all these things and she's just she's educated me so much and like we'll share clients and all those kinds of things so I think that just that kind of entrepreneurial spirit in the city is is inspiring that's cool. Uh, and you think that Baltimore is particularly good at incubating that entrepreneurial spirit and, and, and helping um, birth those collaborations? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think, yeah, living in a big city like New York would be great too, but I think it has its overwhelm <laughs> component. Whereas here in Baltimore, you know, it's a city, but it feels like a small town and everyone knows each other. I remember when I was even just talking to people about doing this um, podcast with you and I was like, just running your name by people. Cause I was like, you probably know, like you probably just know them because it's Baltimore and you know, so <laughs> it's just interesting how this city works. Did you get any? <laughs> Stay away. Early in the interview, Molly said, If I'm going to be part of this, I'm going to do it with my camera. She was referring to the Black Lives Matter protest rallies and how she wanted to shout from behind the camera and join in with the protesters to help them tell their story. Instead, she's made a very different decision. She tells her stories by shooting through her lens and capturing the emotions and interactions between people. With her 
uh, front porch project, she said she photographed a lot of joy and a lot of poverty. But what really gets me about her photos is how the joy overpowers and trumps everything, including the very poverty that's surrounding the people that are in those photos. Next week, I'll have another Baltimore story, another episode that documents and details things that are going on in our Patterson Park community. So please join me. Meanwhile, have a great couple of weeks, and we'll talk to you soon.